What is up, everybody? I'm Vish Kumar, and I cover the 49ers on my YouTube channel. You can find me there as at Vish Kumar. And the 49ers just lost their first preseason game, 34 to seven, to the Las Vegas Raiders. They pretty much got blown out. The Niners look like a team that had invested a lot of their energy into competing in those joint practices with the Raiders the last couple of days, and they look pretty tired. It was a pretty sloppy game across the board. I'm going to give my reaction to some of the more prevalent topics. Obviously, the most important topic that everybody will want to talk about is the quarterbacks. How did Trey Lance look? How did Sam Darnold look? How did Brandon Allen look? I'll definitely talk about that. Just a couple of things I wanted to highlight before I get there. Um, number one is the 49ers backup offensive line to me is, is a point of concern. It is something that we're going to have to look out for um, over the course of the season. The Niners are going with some young guys that are developmental prospects and guys like Nick Sakel, uh, Jalen Moore, who hasn't necessarily developed all the way as much as they would have liked when they picked him two years ago. Of course, you have Jason Poe, who's another talented developmental prospect. And they're going with these guys behind their uh, starting offensive line. And all these guys have the capability of perhaps becoming very good backups further down the road, but I think all of them are a year away from playing. This actually somewhat reminds me of 2019 when you had the young unknown offensive line uh, backups like the Justin Schools, the Daniel Brunskills. Last year or that year, the Niners were able to overcome um, some offensive line injuries, but that'll definitely be something to look out for. I thought Zakel and Poe especially struggled today. The other one is the defensive line. My uh, buddy Larry Kruger uh, of the Krug show. He's been talking about how the Niners defensive line, the backups especially, have disappointed him in camp. I thought outside of the one inside move from Cleveland Furl early in the game, and then a couple of really nice reps from Javon Kinlaw where he looked explosive and healthy, and he got some penetration. The Niners defensive line did look overmatched, at least their backups did, which is a little bit different from other preseason games we've seen from the Niners defensive line in the past, because usually, you know, we get to the ninth, 10th, the 11th, 12th guy on this defensive line. Guys that won't even make the roster will be getting sacks later in games. I don't know that I look at the Raiders necessarily as this very deep team up front. So those are going to be two things to monitor because obviously the Niners win games first and foremost at the line of scrimmage. They're excellent on both lines of scrimmage, especially in the run game. It'll be interesting to see if that holds up. So now that we've gotten through that, the other thing I wanted to highlight is, of course, the rookie Jair Brown, the highest pick of the Niners in the draft, the third round pick. We'll get to the other two rookies at some point, I guess, that struggle. Latu, who had the penalty and the fumble, both which weren't great as he's had somewhat of a disappointing camp. And then, of course, you had um, uh, Jake Moody missing a couple of field goals. I know that there's going to be a large overreaction to both. Again, this is the first preseason game. Um, there's a lot of nuance and a lot of things that will go into this offseason. I don't know if there needs to necessarily be an overreaction to that. Specifically on Jair Brown, I thought he had one really, really nice play on the Raiders' first drive. He had a tough one-on-one -on -one tackle in the alley. It was him in the back. He tackled at the back at the one-yard line. It was a really, really nice play by him. It was good to see. Um, I think tackling specifically in the alley is something 49ers safeties did struggle with last year. I know Hufunga was a first-team All-Pro and Gibson had a strong year, but you go turn on the Carolina game from last year against Christian McCaffrey, who's now a 49er two times. Hufunga had Christian McCaffrey in the alley one-on-one. -on -one. He didn't make the tackle. And so Jair Brown in the alley, nice to see. So now let's get back to, you know, what everybody is here to see. And I see the comment section already talking about it. And it is, how is Trey, how did Trey Lance play? Well, it, it's, it's a very complicated thing to talk about, right? Because the Niners weren't very good around Trey Lance today. They didn't protect well for him. The receivers weren't getting the most amount of separation. But I thought that Trey Lance himself also had a very up and down performance in terms of his decision making and process. Now, I, I would like to preface everything I say with this is one game. There shouldn't be an overreaction. This isn't the end-all, be-all. I think with Trey Lance, every time he plays turns into an overreaction, and I think part of that is because the sample size of the player is so low. Every time we see him, it feels like we're seeing more of him than we've ever seen, and therefore we're able to draw greater conclusions than we've had. But I, what I did see today, I, I saw a very, very up and down performance. There were a few things that were great that showed his talent. And then there were a few things that showed why he's really wrong, why he needs to play more, why he was inconsistent. Let's start with the sacks. There were four of them. The first one, first play of the game, right? It's quick game. 
He doesn't throw the hitch to the, I think he, I think the hitch was to the boundary. He doesn't throw the hitch to the boundary to Chris Conley. The corner's kind of squatting on it. It looks like the Raiders are playing three deep. It's hard to tell because the safety rotates from the boundary hash, but he does, you don't see if he fully rotates to the post. I think they're in three deep. It's an interesting decision because that particular concept that the Niners run, the hitch is actually the alert. So usually they read it stick to flat to stick on the backside. And if you watch the play, the stick is actually open. So why he chose to throw the hitch, I don't know. It was a good decision not to throw it. He gets sacked after, but I, I don't know what the process that led him because if he actually go reads the quick game concept to the concept side, which is flat to stick, he gets that throw off despite, you know, Jason Poe pretty much getting beat. So is the first sack on him? I'm not sure that's a debatable point. The second sack is on that same drive, right? The third down. That's a throw he's got to make. It's third and five, right? You got you to gotta stick route Ross Welly right in front of your face, step up in the pocket. He sees the cover two corner on the field side kind of squatting, and it makes him hesitate on whether he should throw that ball. If you throw that ball on time, you can fit it in there, even though that corner is kind of squatting, compressing the space on where you can throw it. If, if there's timing and accuracy to that ball, you can fit that in. So I think that sack is on him. Third and five, that's a throw you got to make. The third sack was just a production protection bust on third and eight. The right side of the offensive line got destroyed. He tried making a play. He couldn't have. They held anyway. It was no chance. And then the fourth sack was a play action. Another throw. He had time, space to make the throw. He, he wasn't decisive and he didn't make the throw. So there were moments of indec indecision there that he simply didn't make throws that were available. Now, where was the good? We saw four, I thought, really good things that showed off his athleticism and ability, right? Two times he had pressure uh, and the Raiders had him dead for rights and he escaped and he made a play. Now, both of those plays didn't yield in big plays. They didn't end in, oh my God, this is a huge play and all of that. But they were positive plays that avoided negative ones. And those were positive. And then two times they called that dagger concept out of that bunch. I saw Ted Nguyen, t Ted Nguyen tweeted about it um, twice. Uh, they, they had the back, they had called the dagger concept out of that bunch to the field. The wide guy on the bunch runs the dagger route. Both times it was Chris Conley. First time, third and eight, he made a great throw. He had great, it was great time. He stood tall in the pocket. He was decisive. He was quick. He threw an accurate ball with great space, with great pace on third down. He had time and it was a good throw. The second one was um, right after the interceptable pass that he threw on the final drive. It was a throw to Chris Conley. Pretty crazy layered ball. The linebacker had depth. He fitted in. It was a terrific throw. Showed his talent. So that's where, you know, you, you see the talent of the player, but it was an up and down performance. He needs to play a lot more. Obviously, the touchdown throw, which I didn't touch down touch on, was a very lucky play on the little half boot that he gets out throwing to going to his left. I don't know why he threw through that ball. I've watched that play maybe six, seven times. Since it happened during the game, I, I still can't get to why he threw the ball. It was very fortuitous how it fell off of Duke Shelley's hands into Ross Welly's. Anyway, being lucky is, you know, sometimes good, sometimes bad. I, I, I would say overall with Trey Lance, it, it was the kind of performance you would expect from a young quarterback who hasn't played a lot. I don't know if you can really write him off because you saw a lot of things that displayed his talent, right? Both those throws to Conley, those are Again, NFL throws, those are big-time throws. One's on third and eight. One's right after you throw a nearly intercepted ball. But there were a lot of questions with the process, the sacks he took. I thought his process was sped up a little bit. He didn't look exceedingly comfortable um, in the pocket with people around him. That tends to happen. I do want to also give him the benefit of the doubt that this was his first game returning from a serious ankle injury. We saw Jimmy Garoppolo's first preseason game when he returned from the ACL, how jumpy he looked on that Monday night against the Denver Broncos. That was one of the worst preseason games I've ever seen a quarterback play. I think his pass rating was 0, 0.0 in that game. Trey Lance's pass rating was not 0, 0.0, but you can understand why there's a little bit of hesitation when the quarterback's been wearing the non-contact jersey for the entirety of the offseason, and now he has to deal with some pressure and people around him, especially if he's coming off the serious nature of or the kind of serious injury Lance is coming off of. So I don't know that I would write him off or say he's Mahomes based on this performance. It was an up and down performance. I, I, I'd love to see more of him this offseason. But I, I think the underlying point and the one thing, one takeaway that I would definitively have from watching Trey Lance today is that he's just a guy that needs to play more. He needs to play a lot more. Before I get to Sam Darnold, I did want to look at some of your comments. 
B rad underscore eight thirty one says Ronnie Bell looks good. I agree. The one pick off of his hands to Brandon Allen was a little bit unlucky, but he had a hell of a catch on that throw down the sideline from Sam Darnold, which is also a terrific throw from Sam Darnold. And he looks, yeah, he looks like a baller. Um, I do think, by the way, between him and Jamison, if we're talking about replacing Ray Ray McLeod in the return game, which one of them will have to, I think that Jamison is better equipped to do it. Now, the reason Ronnie Bell looking good anyway is extra interesting is because I think a lot of us look at the Niners roster and we think we think three receivers are making it definitively, right? Debo, Brandon Ayuk, and Juwan Jennings are going to make the team for sure. They're the starters. Then we think Danny Gray makes the team because he was a player that the 49ers drafted in the third round. So if we give him the spot, that's four wide receivers. We thought the fifth one would be Ray Ray McLeod. He broke his wrist. The 49ers only have an $875,000 cap hit tied to Ray Ray McLeod this year. So he is a player that they can cut. If Ronnie Bell proves that he can make the roster, that's money that the Niners can save. I think they can save like a million and a half dollars by cutting Ray Ray McLeod. And so that's where that injury is particularly interesting. Bell playing well is interesting because I think a lot of us tend to believe the Niners will keep five receivers, four tight ends and five backs just because of how much depth there is at running back. And because, you know, they drafted Cameron Latu, who despite his somewhat up and down or somewhat disappointing training camp and disappointing game today, we expect to make the roster. And then Braden Willis looks like he's going to make the roster and we can't expect them to have. I saw my buddy Brad Graham tweet about this. We can't expect them to have just two rookie players behind George Kittle as their backup tight ends, especially with George Kittle's injury history. So therefore, four tight ends make sense for this team. And if four tight ends make sense for this team, five backs make sense for this team, you're probably thinking five receivers. And in the case you're thinking five receivers, if Ronnie Bell proves that he can make this team, Rayburn McLeod could be gone. And that's crazy to think about because just a year ago, Rayburn McLeod was such a key contributor to this team. Um, DTH33 says, Sam made the O-line look better than Lance did with his quicker process and decision-making. Yeah, I think Sam Darnold just looked more like a veteran than Trey Lance. And I think that's the most difficult part about the Trey Lance conversation. Um, He looks talented. I, I, I know a lot of people are ready to write him off. I don't know if I'm there yet with Trey Lance. I think I see enough talent. For example, I thought today there was an improvement, right? We talk about the hesitation that exists in his game, but I used to see a hesitation in his passing when he was throwing these short passes. When he threw that uh, quick out to Fumagalli, he threw that ball with pace and accuracy, but he didn't throw it in an uncatchable manner, and he threw it nicely, right? The check down to Dwelly the first time he got protection in the game, play action, deep to short, right, comes down, checks it down to Dwelly. He threw that ball without hesitation, decisively and accurately. So there is improvements in the passing. I thought he threw the ball pretty accurately today. We saw some of the flashes of the playmaking when he got outside of the pocket. The jump pass back across his body was a really, really nice creative play. So there is talent here. But I think the issue is that a lot of the process, because of how little he's played, he still looks like a very young player. Whereas Darnold, despite not being a very successful player throughout his career, looks like a veteran player just out of 55 games of equity. And I don't know if that leads Darnold to being better equipped to being the 49ers backup than Trey Lance. That's a conversation that we will continue to have over the course of this offseason. But certainly, I, I think it's a very interesting conversation on what you do with Trey Lance because, I again, I, I've said it in the past, I'm not sure that he's necessarily the person that you would want as your backup quarterback. And I'm not sure for him even a situation where being a backup quarterback is ideal. This is a guy that needs to play. He has to play. He needs more experience. And so I I would say that those are the two things that I would have to see from him. Um, I, I, I would love to touch on some topics that maybe you guys got from the game. I don't want to just keep going on on my thoughts. Um, but I, I do think there's a few things. Niners Lakers fan says trade Debo, extend Ayuk, Bell replaces Debo. I don't know about that one. The best way I can describe Bell in a receiver somewhat similar to this offense is he looks like Walmart, and I mean this with all due respect when I say this, it's Walmart Robert Woods to me. If you remember what Robert Woods looked like, this is Walmart Robert Woods. Tough, physical, good after the catch. He catches the ball well. He does what he has to do. Um, I think he's a good player. Um, Joseph Calentino says, talk d This the QB nonsense. So he doesn't want to hear anything more about the QBs. I guess we can touch a little bit on the defense. 
I was pretty disappointed in the Niners defensive line, like I mentioned earlier. I The Niners defensive linemen, I'm accustomed to their backups in preseason dominating. And I thought their backups got dominated a little bit in preseason today. Now it's one game. It'll be interesting to see how the depth carries on over the course of the season for the 49ers. But for sure, I, I, I had some concerns. Cleveland Furl had that one big win on that sack of Aiden O'Connell with that nice inside move. It was a nice play. But that would be the one like standout real play that I really liked from you know the Niners' defensive line. Besides that, I thought Javon Kinlaw got penetration a couple of times. I thought he looks healthy. He looks explosive. He looks good. But I thought Kevin Givens got moved in the run game. I thought D.Y. McGill got moved in the run game. So it'll be interesting to see. For sure, the Niners' defensive line will look different when you add Javon Hargrave, Eric Armstead, and Nick Bosa. So I don't know if anybody should worry but I also don't know if the depth is the exact same that it was last year, right? Like the Charles Amenahues, the Samson Mebukams, those were some good players that the 49ers lost, and it's not looking certain that they've replaced them right now. I will also say I was a little disappointed in the Niners linebackers overall. I had a high expectation. I think that there's seven guys on this linebacking core that are capable of making this roster. I, I think that, you know, McCrary Ball is a guy that, is talented. I think that he was a guy that I thought would capture the starting job this off season. He looks like maybe he's a year away from that. Still a very young, talented player. I expect him to make the roster. Flanagan fouls. Is he going to make the roster? That's a question mark. Curtis Robinson, a guy who made the roster last year, despite being injured. Will he make it? That's going to be a question mark. Curtis Robinson also, um, is interesting because he plays excellent special teams. And then you have the two draft picks, right? Winters and uh, Jalen Graham. I think the linebacking core is something to watch out for, but definitely I didn't feel like the unit was a standout unit where it looked like, dang, the Niners have so much special talent and depth there. I thought they looked like they had some young players playing there for sure, which was interesting. And it'll be something to monitor. b 88 brings up a really good point that Ambry Thomas looked good. And I, I thought so as well. Ambry Thomas looked about as confident as I've ever seen Ambry Thomas look. And it's pretty interesting because this is an opportunity, I think, for Ambry Thomas to make this roster. And the reason I say that is less about, well, he was a third round pick and Ambry Thomas played well before. And it's more about, hey, uh, Steve Wilkes comes from a place where they like long rangey press corners, right? The Niners just drafted one in Darrell Luther who's a long rangey press corner. And the rumor was that they drafted him out of Steve Wilkes's request. He's who we wanted. Ambry Thomas coming out of Michigan. This is a long rangey press corner. That's his style. That's his game. He physically fits the mold of what the Niners or Steve Wilkes has looked for in corners in the past better than perhaps like a, um, uh, Diamador Lenore or even a Sam Womack. Now Sam Womack also plays in press. So does Diamador Lenore, but he, is more prototypical, I guess, when you look at height, weight, speed. Um, but the other thing I would add to it, too, is I think that a lot of people thought the Niners were making a transformation into pressing more with their corners just because when they drafted Thomas, that was his game, and they signed um, Charvarius Ward an offseason ago, and his game also is being a long rangey press bump and run corner. That's his game. And they didn't necessarily really make that transition last year. It'll be something to monitor if they do that this year. They did play a lot of man coverage today, but most teams just do play man coverage, play a little bit of zone in preseason. It's very vanilla. You're not game planning for anything. You're just really going and allowing players to play. But that'll be something to monitor, right? If Rambry Thomas is playing well throughout the preseason, if he has a strong offseason, I think a lot of people wrote him off on making the roster this year. I certainly did. It might, need, it might be time to change that conversation, especially when you look at the personnel mindset of the coach who's now coaching the defense and the skill set of the player in Ambry Thomas and how he fits into that. Lakers, Niners Lakers fan Ed says, at Duddy, the defensive scheme is new. Uh, no, the defensive scheme isn't new. Um, there's wrinkles that Steve Wilkes will bring. That's from his background, right? Like, I think you might see them maybe blitz linebackers a little bit more on third downs. The Niners used to live in those sim pressures where they would bring the nickel, 
bring the edge or drop the edge out of the backside, right? Or don't bring the nickel, show that double A gap mug look, break out and play cover three or break out and play Tampa two and Fred Warner runs the pipe and is the whole middle hole player in Tampa two and nobody does that better, right? Like the viral play from the Cowboys playoff game when he runs in Tampa two step for step on that Tampa two sim pressure with CD Lamb, as good as it gets. But there's not going to be a long change to this defense, right? Philosophically, this defense is going to exist exactly how they've existed because the vision of this defense is not the vision of Steve Wilkes, the vision of Robert Soller, the vision of D'Amico Ryans. It's the vision of Kyle Shanahan. This four down front with the wide nine, the way they play three deep or quarters behind it, how they play, how they fit the run, it's, it starts in Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch's roots, right? It's very similar to the Tampa Bay defense where Kyle Shanahan started coaching as a quality control and John Lynch first established himself as a future Hall of Fame player. So philosophically, whether it's Steve Wilkes, whether it's D'Amico Ryans, whether it's Robert Sala, they're going to be that defense. We're not going to see that big of a change. But the reason I brought up the personnel change specifically with Steve Wilkes is because he's been known to like long press corners. They took Darrell Luther. That fits the skill set of Ambry Thomas. He's a player that I originally ro- I, I originally didn't think would make this roster. But now when you look at the personnel mindset of the coach, the improvement of the player, the improved confidence of the player, I I do think that there is an opportunity for them to, for him to make the roster. That's really all I have for you guys. I don't know if there was any topics from the game I missed. I I went through Trey Lance there a little bit. I I don't know if I touched on Sam Darnold. Maybe we can touch on him real quick. I, I thought he looked okay. The throw to, um, Ronnie Bell was obviously particularly good. He he was quick, decisive. He made a couple of nice decisions. His drives got cut short, right, with the Latu fumble. The Jake Moody missed kick, which wasn't great to see, but I have faith given what we have been hearing about Jake Moody in camp. It sounds like he's been mostly doing extremely well, so I, I, I have a lot of faith there. I, I don't know if Sam Darnold was necessarily wowing, but I think Sam Darnold looked good. I think Sam Darnold looked like a veteran quarterback. And I thought Brandon Allen also looked pretty good. And yeah, he also, I guess, looked like a veteran quarterback. I don't know. I, I, again, I, it was a interesting game to watch. I think perhaps the only thing in the game I was really shocked by was how the Raiders were able to dominate both lines of scrimmages. I expected the Niners to be deeper and better at both lines of scrimmages. I don't know if that's an attrition thing. I don't know if the Raiders were just the fresher team, or I don't know if maybe I've been underestimating the Raiders defensive and offensive line depth this entire time certainly the Niners offensive and defensive lines will look a lot better when we see their starting caliber players play especially the impact that Nick Bosa or Javon Hargrave or Trent Williams have on the players around them making them better but I didn't expect the Raiders backups to be that good and so it'll be something interesting to see but for sure I I'm interested Joseph Calentinos continuing in the comment section about Kinlaw having zero cartilage left in that knee. Look, it's interesting, but it looks like Kinlaw has had a healthy offseason and he got moved a little bit in the run game today. But for him, I don't know that he was the only one getting moved. And that's that's where this becomes complicated. And that's where I haven't watched the plays back. I mostly spent a lot of time just watching the quarterback's plays back. So we can come back and talk here and perhaps we can discuss Kinlaw at another time. But I don't know if, you know, the 15 snaps he played today were enough for us to say, well, he's good or bad. And I certainly think him having a healthy offseason this year does change the context of our conversation around Javon Kinlaw. And I'll, I'll touch on this before and I'll probably end the stream right after this. But the one thing that's always been missed with Kinlaw throughout his career is, Uh, what Joseph touched on, right? It's his knee, but it goes further than that, right? His knee has almost always been hurt during the off season. So he's gotten surgery and he's been rehabbing, right? The first off season, he got the scope and he had to deal with that knee scope and he had the knee scope and then it was uh, swelling and he was dealing with swelling and he was in and out the entire off season. And then they shut him down like three weeks into the year in 2021. And he had the ACL surgery. He comes back, has the ACL surgery last year. He's rehabbing. The knee is not fully right. He's still rehabbing from the ACL goes through last season where the knee is unhealthy. This year was the first off season that he didn't have to get surgery. He didn't have to rehab. He finally just got to train with that knee. It sounds like he's had a good off season again in 15 snaps. I thought he looked healthier than he's ever looked. I thought he looked more explosive, fresher, quicker than he's ever looked. 
I'd like to give him a chance and see how he looks this year, especially because I think the Niners need him. His size is a difference maker, and it'll be interesting to see. Um, I think that's about it. I, it was pretty interesting game. Obviously, Niners football is back. Preseason, of course, doesn't matter, but it's always disappointing to see the Niners lose, even if it's, you know, preseason. 34-7 to is a tough one to see, but... I think that there were a few positives from this game, a lot of negatives from this game, and it'll be interesting to see what the Niners do going forward. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I will likely post this stream as my post-game reaction on my YouTube channel as well. You can find that on YouTube at Vish Kumarin. If you want to hear further opinions from me on Trey Lance, Sam Donald, the Niners quarterback information situation, all of that, you can find all of that there. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Hopefully, I'll be back next time. Go Niners.